again. You want me to go ahead and start? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do this too. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. I can prove I was here in my life. Okay, let's go on Facebook. Okay, so I'm Jonathan Holloway, I'm Principal Quality Engineer at Red Hat, and I'm going to be talking about sorry, uh, writing a practical test case example in Glusto. Uh, if you're not familiar with Glusto, I'm only going to give a very brief introduction to it, so I can hop right into writing a test case. Essentially, Glusto is a framework of frameworks or a collection of tools uh, that you would use to write test scripts. And it's not necessarily just for test scripts. You can use it for any other scripts. Uh, I use it for my provisioning scripts because uh, it offers some capability, remote capability, and logging and config file capability uh, where I can read my host files and write them out to Ansible format, uh, <coughs> Hiketi format. Uh, Several different formats. It's got two primary components. A class that combines all of the tools that it wraps, so it can be presented in a single, uh, easy to use interface, a single import essentially. And then a command line wrapper, uh, user bin glusto. And all that really does is gives you uh, config file cap capability to your tests. Key features are, I'm only going to talk about two or three of these, uh, remote calls via SSH, uh, wrapper for unit test discovery and configuration, uh, and it works with multiple unit test frameworks, uh, kind of the three most popular, Python, PyUnit, PyTest, and Nose. And then installing Rusto, uses setup tools, so you can use the pip command directly, install it directly from the, the repo, or you can clone the repo, CD into Glusto, and Python setup install. There's a Docker container uh, out there. It's a base Fedora container that has just Glusto in it. Um, and I use that for demos and for running my tests. So I'll upload all of my Docker files that I use to, uh, to configure that uh, as examples. I don't have them up there right now. And I won't really focus on that today either. The second piece that you need to install is Glusto libs dash Gluster, and it's not necessary to write test cases. It's just helpful because it's going to have your volume creation, uh, mount, uh, reading configs, uh, the things that are specific to Gluster. So Glusto really doesn't know about Gluster at all. Uh, that's where this comes in, and then the code that you're going to write as well. So you have options to leverage this. To install it, uh, you essentially clone this may be my, my previous presentation. Uh, essentially, you'll need to clone. The pip's not working right now. So you'll need to clone it, CD into uh, the, the directory, and use the Python setup install. There's also a glustolibs-io that offers some IO methods to use. So writing tests. So Glusto essentially relies on the standard frameworks, PyUnit, PyTest, and Nose. So to write in Glusto, you don't necessarily have to use the user bin Glusto command line utility. You're essentially writing in one of these standard formats. You can use those standard format tools, so Py.test, Nose Test, if you're familiar with those <coughs> commands. You can write and run in those, or you can use the user bin glusto command if you have config files, which you will, uh, to pass config files. So at a minimum, you're going to need uh, a client and server host file, and I've got one listed here. So clients with a Python list of uh, systems, servers, same thing. So at a minimum, you'll need that. <coughs> If you're not familiar with it, this is the basic Py unit script format. We're standardizing, the QE team is standardizing on the class-based format. And essentially it's uh, an import section, uh, your class definition, you can name that class anything you want to. You'll need uh, at least to, to inherit from unit test, .test case. The nice thing about using the standards is we can go back to, you can organize this however you need to within your Python coding. So you can uh, create a 
a my demo class is what I do for, for most demos, and then this test case would inherit from it. So you can organize your code in a different way. If you have 100 test scripts, uh, you'll want to do that and create a, a, a super class that you'll inherit from in your test cases. Then uh, there's setup class and teardown class are the two methods, the first methods that you would use. And this is typically where you would do volume creation, things that all of your tests uh, need to have set up to run. And then the teardown class uh, actually tears that down. Anything you're going to set up in your setup class, you're going to want to tear down in your teardown class method. Then setup and teardown. These actually are similar, but they run before and after each of your test methods. So I'll hop ahead here. So you'll have test methods. They need to be named test underscore. Uh, at least that's what we're standardizing on. Um, so what will happen is in your setup, it will run, test example one will run, and then teardown will run. Setup runs again, test example two runs, and then teardown runs. Uh, so things you can do there are if you need files created specific to this set of tests, uh, you can do that there. One of the criteria for Gluster was a, uh, there's a runs on criteria which was we needed to be able to specify what uh, mounts and volumes this test case can run on. So I'm going to go back to this. So uh, we will define that with a decorator up here, and then there is a reuse setup. And the reuse setup is we inherit that by just using this standard format. So what reuse setup was is if you had 15 <coughs> tests and they needed the same volume setup, same mounts, that sort of thing, we used to have to define that, that this test reuses setup, and it wouldn't rerun the volume setup. But with this, we can <coughs> put all of our related tests within this setup and teardown. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, so anything set up in setup class, anything set up here is going to be reused for all of those tests. So you can categorize your like tests that way. So like DHT, right now we have 130 test cases. There's probably 40 scripts using this method. And you know, 10 of them may have 20 test methods within them. Okay, so to actually use this for a Gluster related example, so plugging this in, uh, import unit test, pi test, uh, from glusto.core, import glusto as g is the line you have to use to use glusto. That's going to be in every script you ever write that uses any of its functionality and then uh, from Gluster base class import runs on. So there is a base class I was talking about, a super class. I'm just not inheriting that for my test case, but I'm bringing in the runs on decorator. And what this does is if this test case can only run on distributed replicated volume types and GlusterFS and NFS mount types, I specify that here. So when I actually do my test run, if I say run all of these tests and I point it to a directory and I want to run on all volume types, all mount types, this will say I can only run on this and will only select those uh, at that point. If I only want to run on distributed when I kick the tests off then it'll say hey I've got distributed here I can do that and it'll mix and match it with clusterfs and nfs. And the same thing applies there if I say I only want to run distributed on, in GlusterFS, this will meet the criteria, so it'll run. Uh, so here I'm doing the setup class and teardown class. This is a real simple example. I'm not doing anything really magical here. Uh, I'm, I'm assigning or defining a master node and a client for use later on and I pretty much use it immediately. Uh, and then a mount point, I'm hard coding that, and that's where your configs would really come in. None of this information necessarily would be hard coded. You'd put it in a config file and pass it at the command line. Uh, g.run is a uh, glusto command that does a remote call to the system, essentially just runs a, a shell command or some other command that can run on it. 
So here I'm starting Gluster D, I am starting a volume, and I'm mounting that on the client. So I specify where I want to do it, what I want to do, and then the teardown class is going the other direction. I'm unmounting, stopping Gluster uh, volume, and then stopping Gluster D. So that is going to run at the top of the test case. It's going to run once, and then once again at, on the way out of the test class. Set up and tear down. In this, I'm just creating a file name based on the mount point information that I hard coded in here. And you'll notice that this is a, a class method, so everything's CLS dot in in the setup class and teardown class. And in setup, uh, it's an instance uh, method, so uh, you're looking at self dot mount point, self dot volume, and self dot mount are um, automatically created for you by the runs on decorator. Uh, and I'll show you why that comes in. It just allows you to use that information because it's dynamically created on the run and you don't know what is what at this point. Um, so it's automatically defined for you. And then I'm going out and I'm touching that file in my setup. Tear down, I'm just removing the file. These are the test methods that I've created. I've just created two. The first one is test mount type. Uh, I just what I'm doing there is I'm testing to see if the predefined, these tests also rely on uh, predefined volumes and mounts. Uh, they're not doing any of that setup in this test. So here I'm just saying in this particular run is what I have mounted matching what's in the runs on mount type. You'll, you'll see that. Um, so you can see up here I've got Gluster FS and NFS. It's going to iterate through those. So this is just testing to see is one of these reality. Um, and then the test create file with touch, that's actually going to test whether that file I create here in setup uh, exists. So I do a g.run and I return, uh, g.run will return a tuple with uh, R code, oh, I can use the pointer, R code, R out, and uh, R error. It's just the standard out, standard error, and the return code. And so I can use standard pi unit asserts against those results. And you get the full gamut of whatever's in pi unit. And actually, I imported pi test. So if pi test gives you additional asserts, which I, I don't think it does, but it may, uh, then uh, you can use those here as well. And then the decorator above the method definition is uh, it's why I'm importing PyTest. So I'm injecting PyTest capability into my PyUnit standard format script. And this is just marking it, essentially identifying it as a build verification test. And I'll show you why that's important here in a minute. So to run your tests, you're going to use, in this case, user bin Glusto. Um, Glusto's built on the idea that it's wrapping these frameworks. It's the goal is, is to allow you to use your development flow, whatever you use. If you're using uh, IDLE, uh, you know, the Python Interactive Interpreter, to code in VI and then run it in IDLE, uh, you can do that. If you're using, I use uh, Eclipse with PyDev, and this works with its test runner, so I get results right there in the same IDE interface. Uh, works well with that. So the idea behind that is just flexibility. I could use pi.test here if I wanted to, but the problem is I have a config file that passed my hosts in, and there's not an easy way to, to really pass that to pytest or pyunit. So that's where the, the Glusto, user bin Glusto comes in. So here I'm doing the Glusto command with the config file, minus C, the config file, and then I'm going to choose the pytest loader and runner. So I do a dash dash pi test equals, and I'm just going to pass it the file name. At this level, if you're familiar with pi test and its parameters, you can plug any of the parameters that you would use with pi dot test at the command line here in there, and Glusto will figure that out and pass it to the the pi test module correctly. Um, <coughs> Uh, PyTest provides XUnit style output, so Glusto doesn't know how you want to report, but because we're wrapping the standards, you can specify the dash dash JUnit XML and get an XML file. And that's real important, especially downstream where we're reporting up through 
through uh, test case management systems and reporting tools, uh, uh, or even Jenkins. So upstream Jenkins, we can do reporting that way, uh, just because it's going to output a standard JUnit XML file. And then because I'm using uh, PyTest as the runner, which does really well with the PyUnit, I haven't run into a PyUnit formatted script yet that fails under the PyTest runner, I get its filtering capabilities. So I showed you that decorator that had uh, BVT, the BVT marker. So I can do a, a dash M BVT, and it will go through there. I've got two tests. One is marked. It's only going to run that one test. Uh, the dash K mount is a filter parameter. Uh, it goes through and will look for the word mount in anything in the path. And I'll show you the path here in a second, how this works. Um, anything in the path of the name. So that's the file name, the class name, the method name, uh, and it, it will pick those out to run for you. So demo. Uh, screen here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cap the file. So that's just the combined file. Everything I showed you in those sections you can you can now see in a linear fashion where I've got the import, the runs on, the class definition, uh, definition of the setup class, setup, test mount, test create file, tear down. That'll be followed by down class and then the next thing it's going to do is run it and I've passed it uh, I don't know if anybody can see it in the back back over there uh, I passed it dash dash TB equals no um, these runners are pretty verbose when you have a fail and I know I've got two of these that are going to fail uh, I don't know can I that's about as far as it'll go Video. Let's see if it'll give it to me. No. No, you can't turn it. Probably have to go back. No, you can't turn it. Yeah, I don't know. You probably have to go back. Oh, this isn't responding to me. There we go. There we go. It's going to cut it off a little bit. You scroll over. There we go. Can you see that? So the dash dash tb equals no just essentially says I don't want all that trace back information when I have a fail, and I'm just doing that for for demo purposes. So it, it kicked it off. Right now it's running running these classes. So the runs on, I'll stop it here. So that runs on decorator you did, it's a Cartesian product essentially that's, that's going on in that, in that decorator. So it's taking your, your replicated and your Gluster FS, mixing it together, then it's going to do replicated NFS. So the Cartesian product of all that. And it's doing a little bit of massage there uh, because if I say I want to run this, my config says I only want to do distributed. It's actually doing this Cartesian product and it will come up with only uh, only distributed distributed mix of this. It'll ignore the replicated piece. Uh, so there's a little bit of extra logic. It's just not the Cartesian mix. <coughs> and what it does is it takes the class that you created in that test script and replaces it on the fly with each of these, it duplicates that class essentially and defines the volume and the mount type parameters for you in that class. So back in that method where I was using self dot mount type or self dot volume type, that's where it's being defined. So you can use that and test against that specific that specific set within there and you don't have to know that when you code. Um, it's just based on on the parameters. So in this case my test mount
failed on replicated NFS because what I had on the system in reality was a fuse mount. So it's looking for cluster FS, and you'll see my cluster FS test mounts pass. And because I did the trace back, uh, no, uh, normally you would get standard out and standard error shown for each of your fails here. And um, so the next thing I'm going to run will actually kind of show you how the class executes the methods. So I'm saying capture, I just scrolled off, but I did dash dash capture equals no. It's a PyTest parameter, and it allows you to say, don't capture any of standard out, standard error for me. I want to see it, so it'll show it to you on the screen. If you don't do that, then you never see standard out, standard error, unless there's a fail. So all my print statements that I put in those methods are going to show up on this one. So setting up and set up class. So the first thing it's doing coming into the class is it's set up there and then at the top creating file so that's my setup method then testing file so there's my actual test method removing file there's my teardown method and then uh, you skip a test and down here at the bottom uh, tearing down and tear down class there's my teardown class and you can see up above also it creates the file and removes the file again so for every test method it's doing setup and teardown then exits with setup class cleaning up So in the next example, it'll get here in a second. <coughs> okay. So the next example will be an example of the BVT marker, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. So I passed it minus M BVT. So what we should see is it's going to say collected eight items. So it still sees all of the Cartesian mix. Shows you eight items. And then it's going to go through and figure out, based on that marker, which ones, <coughs> which methods do I specifically need to deal with. So cluster demo test replicated cluster FS. There's my file with touch, file with touch, file with touch, file with touch. So it did all of the mixes and just picked that one method out based on BBT. So <coughs> So that becomes important when we're talking about uh, what Nigel's doing uh, with the CI environment and Jenkins and that sort of thing. As you create test scripts that fall into a certain category or if, if you want to mark it with a certain type or whatever the criteria is, he will have already created the Glusto command that filters for that. So. If you push one up there and we merge it, then the next time it runs and it meets that criteria, it's going to run that one. If the next time you push something up there, it's got 10 test methods that are marked with PyTest marker BBT, then the next time we do the BBT run, it's automatically going to pick those up. So you can kind of categorize and classify your, your test methods that way. How am I doing on time? You should probably stop. Right. I, got, I got one more. I got, so this is the filter. So this is the filter. And you can see here that now it's running because I filtered on the word mount. It's going to pick out anything in this string. Cluster demo test, if I had said cluster mount test, it would have picked that out. And it's only going to run those four. Still collects the eight, still figures out what your Cartesian mix is, but then goes through and does an extra round of filtering, and that's it. So back to the demo. There we go. So uh, I didn't talk about Glusto and its features at all because I'm out of time. And she's about to kick me out. So <laughs> Gluster Devel, uh, email any questions. Uh, unload the ACK on on the Gluster Dev free node. Uh, there's documentation for both the libraries and Glusto, uh, and we'll put out more demos uh, here in the next 
couple of weeks for the container and how to use the libraries. Libraries are being uploaded right now this week by the uh, automation team. So you'll start seeing those pop up and we'll create demos and docs on how to leverage the mounts and volumes and all those other helper methods that will be available for you so you don't have to write that code in your tests. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, questions. Oh, questions. Oh, questions. Questions. Here. So Renzon had lists for the parameters, um, but the if, what if you wanted to, to require two of the things you know, with an and? It looked like you were basically filtering on ORs with the Renzon. Yeah, it only does kind of a single Cartesian mix where you only get uh, this volume type mixed with that mount type during that test. So to do that we would need to either write uh, another decorator that kind of massages that uh, that information um, or if that's a requirement we can inject that. So Glusto uh, that runs on decorator is in the Glusto base class that I that I pulled in but it's a I injected that Cartesian capability into Glusto so we can either override that and change the runs on behavior or we can create an additional uh, or you can just write that in your in your class itself and inherit it but right now as it stands yeah it's a single mix of each of those products yeah just to add to that uh, we discussed the same thing once before so runs on is uh, additional feature. Uh, if there is a workload kind of a test that you want to run and don't want to care about the volume type, then you use this feature. But if your test already has a clear idea of, OK, I want both the distributed and the replicated volume, then you write the test with everything inside it, and you don't depend on runs on. So that's still possible. Yeah, that's a great point. Everything I showed you, you don't have to use. Uh, <laughs> so this, really, the format is what we want you to use. But the runs on decorator, uh, I mean, you can make it as simple as you want. If it's a simple test case, take out all the extras. Uh, and, and if you already have 30 PyTest formatted scripts, I mean, by all means, put them out there. We kind of want to standardize on one format, but getting some tests going and, and up into the, you know, the community repo uh, is kind of the primary goal. Yes. Um, so, what I would like to know is when do we see the first test and regular runs in upstream Luster Jenkins or CentOS? Yeah. Okay, so the runs themselves upstream, Nigel had them done what, last night? You got those all, or is it all ready to go? That's me throwing you under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> it's waiting on the automation team to finish writing the test. Okay, so it's back to me under the bus. <laughs> So the automation team pushed libraries starting probably last Thursday. They're in review and I haven't looked today to see what's actually merged. Uh, so the libraries that those tests need, because the downstream team, uh, we already have uh, robust libraries and they've been using those. The tests, some basic tests went with that. So hopefully by the end of day today we should see the first of the tests. Yeah, so that's really great because um, once the tests run in upstream on either daily basis or, or whatever, um, we'll expect all the developers to write test cases for their features. So, so that's you under the bus. Exactly. <laughs> but you're first and we'll follow. Okay. The bus has to be there. So me, yeah, Nigel, yeah. and then the I'll catch the bus. bus. Other questions? I'll catch the bus too. Yes. Multi node uh, support, uh, like, uh, what is the configuration required? Is it uh, communicates over SSH or does it use any other RPC layers? That's one question. And the okay. other question uh, uh, Does this framework provide uh, like negative test scenarios, like no removes or uh, brick going down, those kind of things? So, that's so uh, the first one. Uh, the first question was, tell me the first question again, sorry, I was focused on the second one. Why did you note that? The multi-note, okay, so SSH and RPIC, and the methods, so without going into Glusto and its features, which is another, uh, the videos that we have, and I'll link those to the doc page, the videos I have, it's an hour and a half of me telling you all the features of Glusto, so 
and I broke and I broke them up into little sections so you can have 10 minutes of me or an hour and a half of me telling you all the rest of stuff. Uh, so SSH, RPIC, there are methods that will do uh, backgrounding, asynchronous, so all of the features of RPIC that were most common I tried to inject into it. Uh, and then same thing with SSH, uh, where you can run one command on multiple hosts or multiple commands on one host. That sort of thing. Those helper methods are there. And then the second question was negative. negative so that's really going to be a library thing and specific to your need. So Glusto doesn't necessarily know what you want to test. Uh, so that's going to be up to how we write that into the the Glusto libs Gluster if there's common negative tests and that sort of thing. But PyTest and those kinds of things you can assert for negativity, you know, you can do negative asserts and that sort of thing. We're just inheriting all of that. The thing I was worried was no reboot table. Like, the framework will handle, like, after rebooting, uh, will it be able to connect that to that node? So, that's a good question. I know downstream we have libraries that have done that in the previous test setups, uh, our Beaker and Distaff. Uh, so, I'll have to check to see. It should work. It should be the same stuff. But Glusto doesn't know that. It's the libraries that have all of that information. Yeah. Yeah, how to handle it when it comes back up and, and okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.